Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to the Free Game Development Resources Guide for our 2016 edition. Essentially, what we are going to look at is free tools for game development. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's jump right in. So we're going to focus on free, as in um, no cost, not free as in open source. Now, a lot of these are going to be open source, and when they are, I do note it. Now, this is also based on a uh, text-based blog I've already done. It's available right here, as you can see. Uh, we're just going to basically go through every entry on it. But if you want more details, I will link this down below, and it will have every single link we're about to go through. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right in. We're going to start with the art section. Now, I want to do one thing and clarify one thing here. Um, this is not going to include game engines. Now, there's two reasons for this. First off, because if I did include game engines, it would be probably 700 hours long. And number two is I've been slowly covering all the game engines out there as it is. Now, I'm focusing on free tools, and that means free up front. Now, that could be that there's a free version available. It's not does not include timed trials, but it does include free versions if I view the free version itself as having... Um, you know, being useful, not having too many limitations on it. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump in. If I miss anything, please do let me know in the comments down below. Uh, there are a ton of tools out there that are available completely free for developers, so no doubt I can't get to them all, but I'm trying to get the greatest hits here as best I can. And let's start things off with 2D art. Now these are the programs you use for uh, drawing, sprites, painting, you name it. And first one we're going to go with is paint.net. Now paint.net is open source and unfortunately it's Windows only. And essentially what it is is paintbrush plus 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 plus. The built-in Microsoft Paint, they took that and ran with it. So they added layers, editing, filters, uh, plugins, you name it. It is actually kind of my go-to quickie simple editor on Windows platform. Sadly, uh, on Mac you can run it through... Um, like Parallels, I think it can run on Wine, on Linux machines, but it is a Windows-only software, unfortunately. Uh, another one, and this one is available on all platforms, this is probably the daddy of open source packages, is GIMP. Uh, now, GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, and you can essentially think of it as the open source Photoshop. It's aimed at kind of having the same features. Now, one of the big knocks against GIMP is it's been had a pretty horrible interface and they've spent the last couple of versions trying to improve that facet and they've done a pretty good job so if you just need a general purpose editor or sprite drawing um, program of some form uh, GIMP is your go-to it kind of does everything so image manipulation photo touch-up image conversions you name it GIMP does it now another area that you get into is vector graphics. Now vector is a little bit different than what we're mostly talking. We're mostly talking about bitmap or raster graphics so far, but vector works differently. Instead of storing pixel information, it stores mathematical formulas. So when you do a brush stroke, it's actually recording the brush stroke, which is very handy because this allows you to make uh, one image at multiple resolutions and it looks exactly the same at every single resolution. And with multiple devices such as, you know, retina and non-retina, um, iPads, etc., having multiple um, resolutions is becoming more and more common. So you're seeing more and more people use vector graphics. And the go-to program on um, pretty much every app, uh, on pretty much every platform, if we're honest, and um, open source is Inkscape. Now, it would take me a very, very long time just to get into what Inkscape does. Uh, so I leave this as an exercise to the reader. But if you're looking for a vector graphics program or you're looking for something along the lines of or to replace Adobe Illustrator, which is several hundred dollars, or Adobe Flash for drawing, uh, it's Inkscape that you're looking for. Now, another open source package is Krita or Krita. I'm not actually sure which way it's pronounced, but this is a painting program. So it's all about... Um, the brush strokes, the painting, the drawing side of things. Although they have been adding more features that are relevant to game development, such as they just recently added animation features. Uh, there's better text features, so if you need to make a title screen, etc. But it is primarily a painting program. Along the lines of, say, uh, Corel Painter or um, Autodesk. Oh, the name's not coming to me. But basically, it's a dedicated painting package. Open source and completely free. It's been improving at an incredible rate. Um, definitely, if you're looking at doing some digital drawing, Krita is a program you should check out. Now we're getting into the domain of sprite specific. Now sprite graphics are basically, or we're going to go with 8-bit, because I guess technically all bitmap graphics are sprite graphics, but you know the 8-bit, 16-bit, fat, chunky pixel style kind of that we're going for. Uh, ASC Sprite is an editor for that kind of approach. Now ASC Sprite, 
Uh, very simple, straightforward. Um, those are the graphics you're looking at. Now, a lot of times what you're looking for here is onion skinning, animation, a fat grid editor for doing uh, individual pixel drawing, like you can see over here, uh, color palettes, and this has all of those. It's also got the ability to export as sprite sheets and animated GIFs. A uh, very cool program, definitely one to check out if you are working at the pixel by pixel level. Another one on the same level is Graphics 2. Um, this was based off of an ancient program called Deluxe Paint on the Amiga. Now, Deluxe Paint has a special place in almost everybody's heart that's been doing game dev for more than 20 years because this was the program that all graphics were drawn in. It, you know, Back in the day, Deluxe Paint 1, it was the Photoshop of game development back before Photoshop became the Photoshop of game development, if that makes sense. And this is a basically freeware version of it um, it's available on, I believe, most platforms, so OS X, uh, Linux, and Windows. Again, it is open source. Another pixel-related um, graphics program is called Pixel. 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 I'll go with Pixel. Uh, same basic concept. Um, you can actually run it in a browser or you can run it offline. It is open source and available for Mac, Linux, um, Windows and again in the web. So if you go ahead and click this guy, you are actually in the editor. So here's how it works. And this is what I'm talking about when I say a fat, fat, um, fat grid bitmap editor. You're drawing on an individual pixel here. So you can see there's this black pixel right there. We can get rid of it. So that's how you draw your sprites. And then you've got also multiple frames here. You can see how they switch between them. Uh, so that is Pisco. So Pisco can run in a browser, but is also able to run offline, which is very cool. Another pixel editor we've got is JPixel. Same thing, same basic features. You've got animation, you've got the fat grid editor, uh, you've got tile set support, palette support. Um, a lot of times when you're working with pixel graphics, you're working with a fixed palette, which is why that's commonly a feature here. Uh, next one we've got is graphic scale. Now graphic scale is not free. Uh, and unfortunately it is Windows only, but it is also very popular among pixel artists. So I figured I would list it here. Plus the free version is only missing a few features and they're basically file format exports that nobody uses anyways, uh, like ICO. And uh, I believe there's a couple other limitations, but it is perfectly usable uh, as it stands. Plus the full version of it, I think is like 20 bucks. So if you do end up buying it, it's not gonna break the bank. Now we're getting out of the realm of actually even programs. This is actually standalone, runs in a browser, but this is a 2D Swiss Army knife type program. This is the kind of guy you use to do, um, well, these things, pack sprites, texture ripping, read sprites, uh, animating frames, bitmap fonts, creating sprite sheets, extracting sprites, uh, sprite pivots, uh, split a PSD file out, create slice nines, or also known as Oh, what's the other one? nine patch? Uh, extract tiles out so you can actually get the unique tiles and create tile sheets out of this guy, etc. So it's a very um, just universal Swiss Army toolbox program, and you can run it right here. Uh, there are offline versions as well. Oh, it is an offline version. All right, let's cancel that. Uh, it's an Adobe Air application, so you need the Adobe Air runtime in order to load it. It's actually just an Air file that downloads. Now, if you want a more standard program along those lines, there's Texture Packer. Now, Texture Packer is not free software. It costs about 40 or 50 bucks, but the free version um, is able to create uh, sprite sheets, and actually what I use pretty much uh, all the time. So if you just want to pack a bunch of images together, texture packers are both the easiest way to do it. Now if you do upgrade to the pro version, you do get all kinds of advanced algorithms, and this guy supports um, runtimes for just about every single mobile framework out there. So it makes it really easy to, you know, import exactly your texture sheet, uh, you know, even if it's optimized, packed, rotated, etc., into whatever game engine you wish to use. Uh, another guy, this is kind of moving a little bit different, is Dragon Bones. Now, Dragon Bones is a 2D animation software. Basically, you create your 2D drawing, such as, say, this guy, and then you define bones in it. Now, you'd cut this guy up into different pieces so it knows what each little piece is, and then you animate it using bones, just like you would in the 3D world. Now, Dragon Bones also has a couple of run times for running in various, uh, as you see here, Unity, HTML5, Flash, uh, Starling, I think that is, Coco's 2DX, and I have no idea what that graphic is. Uh, but it's got runtime, so basically you can export your animations out into those game, game animations and use them immediately. Now, if you, this is looking familiar too, it's a lot like an open source implementation of uh, Spriter, uh, Creature, or Spine, or the big three commercial versions. Well, Dragon Bones is a free version, free download. And Dragon Bones is available on Windows and Mac OS, sorry Linux users. Now another guy here, and this guy is commercial software. This is actually made for uh, 
big time animation. This is actually Studio Ghibli made this guy and they used it for uh, Princess, and I'm going to screw this up, Mononoke. Mononoke? I don't know. I'm not a big anime fan. But basically, uh, this is the software they used for inking and um, animating, uh, full-blown animation. Like, But it can also be adapted and used for games. There have actually been a couple of games that were created using OpenTunes. So it definitely has its functionality. Um, but it was recently open-sourced. And it is one of those things to check out for a serious animator. Now, as you can see, it's available on Windows and OS X, and again, completely free. So that's always kind of nice. And this last one is incredibly unique, and I questioned if I should include it or not, because it doesn't seem to be under development anymore. As you can see, the last check-in was a year ago. But it's still a cool little program, and one that might be perfect for you. So I decided to include it. But basically what it is, is a 2D graphics maker that uses 3D objects to do it. So basically you use 3D primitives, as you can see here, this um, uh, cube or torret, no, not a torret, a cylinder here has had another cylinder cut out from inside of it with boxes added. So basically you use uh, raw shapes and kind of booleans to make really rapid and quick sprites. You'd be amazed at how fast you can actually create some really cool results for this guy. But again, it doesn't seem to be actually actively under development anymore. So what you see is what you get, unfortunately. As you can see, there's this plan stage here, and there's this beta stage that's in progress. But in progress seems to be a complete and utter lie. But anyways, that is all the 2D paint packages. Now we're going to move on to 3D. Uh, 3D, we are here. Now, of course, 3D is going to start with Blender. And if you're gonna pick up one 3D application, pick up Blender. I've done tons of content on Blender. I have full tutorial series on Blender. I've done introductions to Blender. So if you want Blender help, Game From Scratch has you covered. So go through my channel or go to gamefromscratch.com. I think I actually uh, may have linked off to some, tu yeah, I linked off to some tutorials uh, in the text version of this guide. Blender is the daddy. Blender is the big open source 3D package out there. And it's way more than just a 3D package. It actually is a painting program, a composting program, a nonlinear editor, a 3D sculpting program, a 3D modeler, of course, two 3D renderers, a game engine, you name it. Blender is a staggeringly impressive program. And it's like a 200 meg download and it's completely free and it's open source and it runs on just about every platform you can think of. It has a reputation as being hard to use, and in the last couple of versions, in the last probably two to three years, they've really been refining the interface, and they've come a very long way. Blender is the open source equivalent to 3D Studios Max and Maya, and I hate to be you know, a fanboy here, but I would actually call it the peer of either of those programs, too. If you're going to check out one 3D program, make it Blender. But it's not your only option. Now, next up is another one, is Daz. Daz is kind of a unique program. It's a bit like, actually, it's almost identical to a program called Poser. And the whole idea behind it is you build your models, and you know, they're pre-built, kind of like you would create a character in a game. Um, and then you use Daz to dress it up, pose it, and off you go, animate it, etc. It's probably the easiest character studio you're going to find out there. And they're, they made their entire suite free. They also made their uh, 3D modeler called Hexagon, which is garbage, but it's free as well. So you can download the Daz Studio suite and you get all this stuff completely for free. Now, what you're looking at next though, is, um, so you see in building rigging, morphing, animation, rendering, and physical based rendering is all built in, but you'll notice there's no modeling and texturing. So, hey, pick up Blender and you're good to go. But what they make their money on is by selling characters. So if you need um, outfits, uh, hairdos, etc., props, uh, Daz sells a ton of that stuff. Now I do have to warn you, Daz will spam the hell out of whatever email address you register with. It was very irritating. I was getting about four or five emails a week before I blocked them off and even saying unsubscribe did not get rid of them. So you have been warned there, but you can get some pretty staggering results out of here with no artistical ability. And there's not a lot of programs on this list that are gonna match that description. Now, another uh, program here that's kind of unique and it's gonna be very similar to one I'm gonna cover in a moment called Sculptress, but this one is Delay and it's an open source 3D sculpting application. Now, 3D sculpting is kind of like modeling uh, just using virtual clay. Now, a lot of times you end up generating very high density, not really friendly for game development meshes, but if you're working with renderers or 2D, that doesn't matter. And if you get into 3D, there's something called retopology, which basically you can use this high definition mesh and then essentially trace over top of it to make a game worthy version of it. So don't discount sculpting by any means. Now, uh, again, this is an open source product. It is available on uh, Windows and Linux. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of those things to check out. It's very, very, very small download. And I've done a video on it. So if you don't want to download it, you just want to see it, go check the guide. I've linked to a video that shows you this program in action. 
Um, another guy here, this is going to be kind of unique on this list. It actually is unique on this list. This is a voxel editor. Now, voxels are kind of an alternative to polygons, although ironically, they get tessellated and in the end be turned into polygon meshes because of the way modern GPU hardware works. Anyways, but to go back, basically a voxel is a 3D Lego brick. So you model in 3D Lego bricks and it's a very logical and intuitive way to work uh, because you know, you're dealing with volume. Um, it, voxels are basically, I think, volume pixels, what it actually stands for. And the most famous voxel program is definitely Minecraft, although there are many, many earlier. There's a company called Nova Logic that made about nine or ten games all based on voxels. And voxel technology, for the most part, lost, if we're honest. So now it's more of an artistic style. Well, uh, Magic, of, Magic of Voxel is a free Mac and Windows-based voxel monitor. Uh, modeler and it's also got the Vox exporter that you can use to import your voxel output into various game engines or whatever kind of environments you want to work with. So if voxels are your thing, this is one you should check out. Now next up, this one isn't technically a program, although there is a program available and I'm recommending this one now on a limited time basis because I don't know what's going to come in the future. But for now, Mixamo is freaking awesome. And now Mixamo is a 2D, oh, sorry, a 3D animation library and system. And that's kind of it. It's a huge, like, I don't know, 2000 kind of thing, animation library that you can map to your character. So basically, you can model your character in whatever program, send it up to them, have it turn uh, so they automatically build the skeleton for you. And then you can use their massive library of animations for your game. So if you need to jump, you need to run, you need a death, you need a sword swipe, etc. Mixamo has a huge library of actual animations available for you. In fact, they also make something called Mixamo Fuse, which enables you to use almost like a game style, a character customizer, and then export it into Mixamo to be animated. And the results are actually pretty game worthy nowadays. They've got a couple other program programs as well. So it's an awesome tool and it's completely free right now. Now the asterisk. Adobe bought them. They're the reason why it's currently free. It used to be an a la carte kind of service. So you paid for the animation, everything else is free. Or you used a subscription. We don't know what Adobe is going to do with Mixamo, but for now it is completely free. So for now, I completely recommend it. If it changes down the future, and I know it's going to, it's basically going to be rolled into the Creative Cloud in some way or shape or form. In that case, it's no longer a free software, and I can't really put it on this list, but I still do recommend it. Uh, it's definitely one of those things to check out. Now, next up is Polybrush. Polybrush, I don't even really know how to describe this guy. It is 3D painting or 3D sculpting. Um, you see a little bit of it going on in the background here. You basically can sketch 3D meshes quickly, symmetrically, using custom brushes as you go. Now, this is commercial software now, but the free version is pretty capable. It just has a limit to eight undos, and you can't save your own custom brushes. It's not really one that I can explain very quickly, but I have done a video of it. So if you want to see Polybrush in action, check out that video or come here and check this guy out. But it has horrific sound effects, by the way. So check my video instead. Now, next up, we have Pixelogic. Now, Pixelogic created a program. Well, they're known for making a program called ZBrush, which is the 3D sculpting program. Basically, the two big 3D sculpting programs are ZBrush and Mudbox, with 3D Soap probably being a third alternative in that list. And all of those are between 400 and 1,000 bucks. Sculptress was a fan-made implementation of ZBrush that Pixelogic actually bought and made available for free. Now, they also stopped developing it, so it ended there, which is a shame because we could have essentially had an open source free alternative to all these programs that was really quite good. Instead, we got a pretty good one that has a dead-end development, but it's still quite usable. Basically, you work in 3D clay. Generally, you start with a simple primitive like a uh, sphere or a cube, and then you just sculpt it and draw it out. And then the results can be exported as OBJ format, which is Wavefront Object Format, which is pretty much loadable by every single 3D program under the sun. Now, the results are going to be very dense. You're going to have way too many polygons. You're going to have to get into retopology to use it in any kind of real 3D environment, real-time 3D environment. But it's still definitely one of those things you should check out. And it's a great introduction to sculpting in the first place. And again, it's free. I've also done a video on, Pixel, on uh, Sculpture, so if you want to check that out, please do so. The final 3D program we've got is called Wings 3D. Now, I'm leaving this on here mostly um, out of respect or history. Um, Wings 3D's development has basically stopped, which is a shame. It was a great little program. It was based on a program called Nendo, uh, which in itself was based on Nichiman N World, which was a 3D package out of Japan, uh, famous for probably making Mario 64, but was used for a number of games back before a lot of 3D packages existed. And then Nendo was this very intuitive 3D modeling program using something called Winged Edge technology. It's a way of making more than four-sided vertex. Um, 
polygons. And now this has become the norm now. So um, Max Maya and all support, so Max Maya and Blender all support some form of n-gon, which is basically a greater than four-sided polygon polygon modeling, but this guy was one of the first to do it, and it did it well. And it had this very intuitive, easy to use, it's just a 3D modeler with a very primitive renderer in there, and that's it. But it used to be great. Now, why I say used to be, it's still really quite good, but as I said, it's not really being developed anymore. Unfortunately, it was written in a language that nobody uses. I believe it was Erlang, uh, but I might be wrong on that. Uh, yeah, it was written in Erlang, which I think seven people in the world know how to program in. So when the developer gave up on it, nobody picked up the reins because Erlang. Uh, but it was a great project. It's open source, definitely one to check out. It runs on multiple platforms. It's still a very streamlined, cool 3D modeler. But the other options on the list have gotten so much better since, especially Blender, that it's hard to really recommend going through the wings learning curve when Blender now with Beamesh, its implementation of NGONs, is very, very good. But Cool program, definitely one from the history books, and it's still available for free. Hopefully someone picks it up and keeps developing with it. Now next up, we're getting into audio programs. This is, I, I will confess straight up front, this is my weak area. I'm uh, probably number one a coder, number two graphics guy, number three an audio guy. Actually, number three a designer, number four something else, number five a writer, number six something else, number seven something else, and number eight an audio guy. So audio is not my strong suit. So. If I stumbled over this a bit, I do apologize, but I did this basically on community requests as well. So hopefully we caught the biggies here. Now the biggie that I use all the time, I recommend everyone check out is Audacity. Audacity is open source um, Swiss Army knife tool for audio manipulation. You can use it to record audio, to modify audio, to edit audio, to change it uh, mono to stereo, to add echo, to add reverb, bass, equalize it, etc. Various dozens and dozens of plugins for manipulating audio. It is the GIMP equivalent for audio and just go ahead and download it. There's no reason not to download it. It's like a 40 meg install, available on all plot, well, available on Windows, Macs, and Linux, completely open source, and very cool. So without further ado, if, you're already, if you haven't already got Audacity installed, just go ahead and get it. You're going to use it at some point in the future. Now it is not for creating audio. You can record audio, but it is not about creating it. Now that's where we get into um, Sunvox. Now Sunvox is really weird. Uh, it's something called a mod tracker, and basically it's a way of you know, creating sequences of sound over time. It's it's it's, it's a music generator. Now, there's built-in uh, synthesizers, uh, you know, waveform generators, etc. You can hook in a MIDI device and record with it. I did a video on Sunbox if you want more details. Now, this is not the only free tracker out there. There are a few dozen, but this is among the most popular, and it runs on everything. Like I'm talking Windows, Linux, OS X, Palm OS, Win Mobile, Mamo, whatever the heck that is, iOS, and Android. And there's where some of the money comes in. I think on the mobile platforms it costs money, but on Windows, completely free. Now, next up, same concept. Ooh, okay, here we go. Is Chiptone. So that's kind of Chiptone. I will make it stop so that that's not going in the background. There we go. It is in the browser, as you can see. Um, you can quickly create uh, songs and tracks using it. Uh, streamline. It's basically, it's a lot like Sunvox. You can do really cool uh, repeats. You can do sound effect changes. You've got default um, gamish sounds to start from, or jump noise, etc. And then you can just basically modify, play with it. Use a keyboard for uh, various different samples. You can bring in samples, which is little recordings that you can in turn play back, etc. You can uh, record. Uh, I think that's voice recording or microphone uh, sequencing uh, and synthesizing. You can save from here and load back into here. So basically it's a browser-based uh, equalizer slash um, tracker music player. I right, hear we use their description. Chiptune. Chiptune is a free tool for generating sound effects primarily for games, but they can be used for anything you like. Uh, we're working on to flesh out the sampler, vocoder, and sequencer early stages. It's a cool program. Definitely one. There's no overhead to download it since it's right here in your browser. Um, the link's down in the text version down below. Do check it out. Now, next guy, kind of along the same line, uh, runs in the browser, but you can download a standalone version for Windows and Mac. Uh, this guy's kind of cool. I actually just published a video on it uh, three or four days ago. It's a quick, simple waveform generator for creating wave sound effects. So if you want to have a coin noise, a coin, it creates it. You want to modify that noise, you can change the various different, so here, let's go here. We'll create a coin. So there's the coin noise. We can change the waveform that generates it. We can change the punch. Uh, we can change the 
pitch jump repeats, etc. All the various things that control the waveform you can see over here that's being created, you can modify. And that's it. It's a very, very quicky, simple waveform sound generator for game sound effects. Uh, generally, your 8 bit, 16 bit style sound going on here, uh, but definitely a quickie version for creating sound effects, especially if, like me, you have very little talent for it. And then when you're done, you can export your project or you can export out the WAV file that you can then include in your game. Uh, now, if you're looking for something a little bit more extreme or, um, I hate to use the word professional, but I'll use the word professional, there's FMOD Studio. Now, FMOD is the, yeah, I would say, along with, is it Weiss Audio, there's FMOD, and there's one other that I'm forgetting, and those are basically it for commercial AAA game libraries. FMOD is a library you can include in your game to do all kinds of things, positional audio, uh, tracking, queuing, you name it. Um, and it comes, FMOD Studio is a full editor acquisition environment. Basically, they're trying to be like uh, Logic, F, um, Pro Tools, uh, Ableton, which are, you know, audio production software for, you know, people in the audio world for the game world. And you can see here, there's a full mixing desk. Um, and then ultimately you can run it out to your game. Uh, it's got debugging in there, 3D sound, etc. Now this is not free software, but it is free-ish. Now what they have is a free version available if you make 100K or less. After that, you start getting into licensing. Now another thing about FMOD, this, there's now FMOD IO, which is their cloud offering, which is a gigantic database of sounds that they've already created. So if you just need sound effects, you might want to just check out FMOD IO. It is part of FMOD Studio. It's integrated directly in. So if you need like an AK-47 gunshot, you go in there and say AK-47, and you'll probably get 46 options. Now, where that's cool is it's 99 cents, one-time purchase, and that's it. So it's a very cheap way to get sound effects, but it isn't free. So technically, I'm not including it on this list. But FMOD Studio itself is up to 100 grand, so I am including it on this list. Now, our last guy here is Podium. Now, Podium has a free version of it. Podium is a digital audio workstation, or a DAW. Uh, enables you to create, record, and edit audio, and also hook in MIDI, which is basically the uh, media in, uh, actually, I forget what the acronym stands for. Basically, it's the communication uh, protocol between real-world instruments and computer. So basically, you can hook one a MIDI guitar in or a MIDI keyboard in and play whatever sampled instrument you want through this guy. And you can also bring in uh, various VST instruments and samples or pl uh, sound effect plugins. And those are basically, you know, like new instruments or various different sound effects that you can then control using the sequencer. Way beyond my pay scale when it comes to music. I don't really know a lot about this, but I do know that the Podium Free version is surprisingly full featured. There are some limitations. Let's see, what are the limitations again? I forget. There we go. Uh, MIDI is limited to one input and one output, so you can only plug in one MIDI device. 64-bit mixer engine option, so no 64-bit mixer engine. Uh, Plug-in multiprocessing is disabled. Rewire is disabled. Surround sound playback is disabled. So you know what? Uh, on the grand scheme of things, that's a pretty limited list of, of disabled features for a full-featured uh, digital... We'll go with digital audio workstation, which is what they call themselves. All right, so I'm going to move on from audio where I'm very uncomfortable. Uh, I'm going to leave you. All right. And next we're going to get into code, where I am very comfortable. Uh, though we can start a lot of holy wars on this one, so I'm going to be very limited in uh, my opinions here. Uh, coding kind of, I should say up right up front too, you may not need anything from this section. What we're going to talk about right now is IDEs, languages, and editors. And I'm only going to really focus on um, game programming. Like basically, I'm going to focus on uh, C++, Java, C++, C sharp and a little bit of JavaScript because those are kind of the biggie for languages. Now there are dozens of other programming languages. There's uh, Objective C, Ruby, Smalltalk, Perl, Python, etc., etc. The list goes on and on. Then you've got your various uh, JavaScript compilers such as uh, TypeScript and Dart and CoffeeScript, etc. And if I was going to cover all those, we're looking at years for this video. So I'm just going to basically talk about the really big languages. And I'm not even really going to get much into those languages. I'm going to talk about the tools for them. Now, what I was saying a second ago before I interrupted myself, ironically, is that 
in many cases, you're not going to need any coding at all. Now, it all comes down to your editor. A lot of editors are going to have a basically one-stop shop. For example, if you get Unity, Unity comes with a C-sharp compiler and JavaScript and um, various other, actually they drop Boo. So there's JavaScript and C-sharp compiler built into uh, or underneath it. Uh, same as uh, most of these game engines actually nowadays, so, you know, it's kind of hidden away from you. Most Lua powered game engines embed their Lua interpreter for you, etc. So if your game engine doesn't require any of this stuff, you may not need any of this stuff. Although a lot of the times the editors they include suck. So for example, if you get Game Maker, Game Maker comes with a built-in editor, but it's not great. So there's a good chance you're going to want to download something like a code editor specifically for it. So that's the stuff we're going to cover here. Now, first we're going to cover Visual Studio Community. Now, Visual Studio is the daddy. It's, if you're working in Windows, you're using Visual Studio most likely. This is what um, most programs are actually created in, even multi-platform programs or Xbox applications, even a lot of PlayStation 4, and then behind the scenes, they use a cross-compiler. It is the big time enterprise slash AAA studio IDE of choice for the most part. But it's big, it's bloated, it's getting on in the years, there's a lot of issues with it. It's it's like a 15 gigabyte full install. It's huge. So there are definitely some downsides to it. But what it is, is a full integrated development environment. That means it's got an editor, um, a text editor with syntax highlighting, code completion, all that jazz, profilers, debuggers, uh, code managers, linters, um, source integration. Basically, all the tools you need for game development, for development in general, are generally in there, including UI builders, etc. So it is a big time thing. And it used to be about a thousand bucks. And the nice thing is they started making something called Visual Studio Express, which is a free GIMPed version. And now what they've recently done is switch over to Visual Studio Community. And Visual Studio Community is Visual Studio. It's just for special licensing. And basically, Visual Studio gives you uh, everything for free, full version, uh, as long as you make less than a million bucks and have a team smaller than five developers. So if you fit those criteria, Visual Studio is effectively free for you. If you don't, it's quite expensive and talk to Microsoft or look at an alternative. Now. The next one on our list is Xcode 8. Now, basically, you can think of Xcode 8 as Apple's version of Visual Studio. Now, this also used to cost money and is now free. So you used to have to have a developer subscription, 99 bucks a year. Now you don't, which is very cool. Um, I hate Xcode, hate Xcode with a passion, um, personal opinion there. But you know what? You still have to use it. If you want to deploy to iOS 8, or sorry, iOS in general, or Mac OS coming up to their store, you need to sign it using Xcode. So Xcode is pretty much a requirement if you are doing iOS development. Unfortunately, um, it is a full integrated environment. It does a lot of those things I just mentioned about uh, Visual Studio. It does them in a way I don't like. Um, C++ is a bit of a third class citizen in this environment. It's more about Objective-C, which also I don't like. Uh, so I'm not gonna really sing up Xcode to you, but if you need to do development on a Mac, chances are you're going to have to have Xcode installed even if you don't use it. So thought I'd make you aware of it. Now, if you don't use it, where it normally comes, if you're not using Visual C++, you're not using Xcode, you're using one of the next two programs. And it's either GCC, which is the GNU C compiler collection, which is an acronym they changed after the fact. It used to be the GNU C compiler, but now it's used for C++ and Java and Fortran and Ada and Go, all kinds of different programming languages use GCC front end for their compiling. But basically this is the open source, open suite of C++ and other language compilers. So if you're using Linux, you have GCC and it's probably the heart heart of um, the GNU project, to be honest. It, it is the compiler tool chain of choice for most developers. And if you're on Windows, there is a version of it called Mingw, M-I-N-G-W. I link it in the text version, so don't worry about that. And it's a port of the GNU tool chain over to Windows environment. Uh, there's also a Mac ports version, so in the Mac world, um, this is an option for you. And a lot of tooling is built over top of GCC. So if you wanna use an IDE over top of it, GCC is often supported. If it's not GTC, it's LLVM. Now this is a bit confusing. Um, LLVM is the parent project of um, the, the compiler underneath it. Now what you generally will use in this day and age is something called Clang. And Clang is a part of the LLVM compiler suite. Now LLVM includes a bunch of other things. It includes a debugger. It includes multiple languages. It includes the C runtime. It includes an open source implementation of the open Open MP project, it's got various different compilers, etc. So there's more to um, Clang than LLVM. So LLVM is the encompassing project. Now where this gets really confusing is it's an analog to GCC. Now GCC is the, as they're nicely calling it, 
the GNU compiler collection, but GCC is also the name of the GNU C compiler. So Clang is to LLVM as GCC the compiler is to GCC the compiler collection. Don't like the naming convention, blame GCC. They like their acronyms so much that they made the world confusing. Now, if you're working cross-platform in C++ and don't like any of those options, there is also Qt Creator. Now, Qt Creator is a C++ IDE and compiler. It's built on, I think, GCC, but it might actually be built on LLVM. So one of those two might even be worked on both. But it's the company that used to previously be known as Trolltech. They're known for making the Qt cross-platform. used to be a UI library. Now it's basically an operating system. Um, but you don't have to actually use Qt to work with Qt Creator, and it's a nice compiler, to be honest. I would rather work in C++ using Qt on the Mac than I would in Xcode, for example. However, if I need to go cross-platform, where I generally end up is JetBrains. Now, this is actually a company and not a compiler, because I don't want to go into all of their particular compilers. They've got so bloody many of them, and they're all pretty good. I actually like JetBrain projects, products across the board. And the nice thing is, it is the same product on C, uh, sorry, on uh, Windows, on Linux, or on Mac. So if you want to work cross-platform, they're a great way to go. Now, the nice thing here is uh, there's generally always a full-functioning free version with very few exceptions. I don't know if their PHP or HTML5 ones have free versions, just time delays, but their Java compiler, their C compiler, their, sorry, Java ID, C ID, C Sharp ID that's currently under development, etc all have completely free and fully functional versions available. In fact, IntelliJ IDEA here was ultimately used by, or usurped by uh, Google to create Android Studio, which I'm not going to mention on, uh, but Android is its own little chunk of fun. And I've actually got a little blurb on my site explaining the differences there. So um, if you want more details, check that out. Now, if I said earlier that I don't like Xcode, I hate Eclipse. Um, Eclipse used to be this great option. It is a open source IDE uh, built for Java, but now has language plugins for just about every language you've seen under the sun. Some people love this thing. I hate it because it gets in the way all the time. I've actually had this IDE corrupt and kill my code, and I've never had any IDE ever do that. However, this used to be the go-to way of supporting Java development on Android. This used to be the only way, actually, uh, to create Android applications that was supported officially by uh, Google. But Google has basically abandoned Eclipse, and so have I. However, if you want to go down that road, it's still available. Some people absolutely love it. And the framework for it, the, uh, the plug-in-free carcass or Nah, that's kind of the bad word. Infrastructure that's used, the, the base of it, is actually used for the default game engine and a couple of other editors you've seen out there. Uh, FDT, uh, the Flash development tool, actually uses the Eclipse runtime as its base as well. Um, so it's not completely bad, but I don't, I'm don't. i not personally a huge fan of Eclipse. But if you're looking for an all-in-one, it's got every feature you've ever asked for, ever, in there, for sure. With it being addable by plugin support, name, like it's probably the most full-featured, potentially full-featured IDE out there. Again, still not a big fan. Now, on the same level, if you're a Java developer, there's the NetBeans IDE. Now, NetBeans is the official version of an Oracle... Oracle owns um, Java these days. They bought Net uh, NetBeans. NetBeans is an IDE for doing development. Truth of the matter is, outside of the JMonkey engine, which uses it as um, their tool scaffolding, uh, not a lot of people are using JetBrains for Java development. I actually prefer JetBrains to Eclipse, but I prefer, I prefer IntelliJ to both of them, so I don't use either. But if you're looking for an alternative to IntelliJ and you're doing Java only, or actually there's a CDT, there, so there are C++ tools in there as well, you should check out NetBeans. It's an interesting project and it's better than Eclipse, in my humble opinion. Now, another guy that we're coming in, we're getting into the world of text editors here. And here we're talking basically just code editing, uh, but they almost all have uh, some kind of project management or folder management in there, and then they just have a ton of tools. They generally all have plugin support of some kind, mostly all support syntax highlighting, as you can see the, um, the color coding here from code examples. Uh, most will support some kind of uh, code completion or IntelliSense. Generally, they support a lot of different programming languages. So I'm going to kind of gloss over a lot of them, but let's get started. First off, we've got Atom. And Atom is the open source implementation. Atom was created by, I want to call this one GitHub, but I might be wrong. Uh, let's go with that. Yeah, it's GitHub. So GitHub basically started the core of Atom. Now, Atom has ultimately been used for... Uh, other editors that have come out since. But Atom is sort of the hackable open source base level editor, and it's cool. It's, it's a very nice lightweight editor. Uh, definitely one to check out if you're looking for a code editor. 
Now, another one is uh, Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code is built on top of Elements, I think, uh, but it is fast becoming an awesome programming language. Now, don't mix Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio Op, completely unrelated. Visual Studio Code, um, well, for one, is available on uh, Windows, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS, and OS X. Kind of shockingly at a Microsoft sponsored project, but yeah, it's very cross-platform. It has incredible IntelliSense. It's got integrated debugging coming in. It's got great plugin support. It is a lightweight editor of choice for me as of right now. Uh, I actually use it as my command line notepad type program. So um, I think Visual Studio Code is a great program. It's better than the, the program that it's based on in my humble opinion. And it seems to be the one that a lot of people are building their projects around. So it's definitely taking off and great plugin support for various different languages. It's a cool editor, do check it out. Now, another one is Sublime Text. Now Sublime Text is kind of the original or OG, very cool lightweight command line editor. And I actually really, really swore by it. But to be honest, Adam and Visual Studio are sort of supplanting it for me. Uh, it's got plugin support, language, just about every language you ever want, syntax, highlighting, project management, you name it. Uh, so it is a very powerful full featured editor. Now, what you're getting when you get it is not technically the full version. It is commercial software, um, but I don't know that there's any actual limitation other than it nags you. And, uh, yeah, I think after you use it for a certain amount of time, you're theoretically, I don't actually understand their licensing, to be honest. It's something you should probably look into a little bit before continuing. But basically, Sublime Text has been free-ish for a very long time, but you do have to pay for it if you use it continuously. I just don't know how that's actually defined. And now when we get into free, free, we've got Notepad++. Now, Notepad++ is, I think, Windows only, unfortunately. Uh, it's open source, GPL. Uh, it's just basically they took the notepad approach, made it multi-tab, added a bunch of plugin support for it, syntax highlighting, etc. If you want notepad, but more code friendly, notepad++ is your guy. Unless of course you're not on Windows, in which case it is not your guy. Uh, I use notepad++ on my server. It's nice for quickie edits. It's, it's a, a solid, powerful editor. It can handle really large text files, which is actually why I had it installed for you know doing, I, I opened a three gigabyte log file in it once. It actually does a very good job there. Um, and it's it's a more powerful notepad. It's exactly what it's advertised as. Now, there's a couple I missed. Well, actually, there's a hundred I've missed, of course, and I can't have them all here, but those were kind of the highlights. But there's also uh, Emacs and Vim. Those are the two editors that go back to the dawn of time. And people love them. Uh, people dedicate their lives to learning them, and you almost have to, if I'm honest about it. Uh, but once you do have an understanding of either of those open source editors, they're powerful and they've been adopted and their keyboard bindings are available in almost every one of these editors I've mentioned so far, including I believe Xcode and Visual Studio. So if you do learn those key sets for uh, Emacs or Vim, you can apply them in other languages. So it might be worth learning for you, but do be aware, it will take you years to master them. Uh, but I figured I would mention both of them for thoroughness sake. Uh, they're both probably already on your machine if you're running Linux or they're completely free open source downloads if you want them. I do have them in the text version. There's not an exciting web page to put up in front of you, so I am not going to. And finally, we get into the miscellaneous category. <coughs> now, this is just stuff that I think you should be aware of. There are tools for game development that are free. Some of these are actually resources, and there's so many things here. I was thinking about just ignoring this category, but I do want you to be aware of some of these things. So I have done this category. We'll go through them very quickly. Uh, first up is Tiled, the Tiled Open Source Map Editor. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Works in a number of game engines, just whatever game engine you want. If you want more information, I've done like a five hours of tutorials on Tiled. I've linked it in the, the link down below. Um, Tiled is definitely a cool thing you should check out for creating open source maps, and it's got export or support for the TMX format in a number of game engines. Um, another one here, and I picked FreeMind at random. There's actually a bunch of them, but FreeMind's one of the ones I've used. What, what's called mind mapping software. I don't think I can get that picture to expand. I can't. Let's get some screenshots up. The whole idea here is to dump out your thought process. It's a great program for uh, well, dumping out your thought process. Uh, it takes kind of the flowcharty approach of something like Visio, which costs over a grand, and this is completely free. Now, there are, again, probably 20 of these programs available, but I just wanted you to be made aware of what mind mapping is for designer tools. So this is probably one of those things you do. A lot of people don't know about mind mapping and probably should. And in my link, I have several of them linked. So if you want options, there are definitely options. 
Now, next up we have da, 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 freesound.org. Now, freesound.org is not a program, not an application, not anything. It's a gigantic free sound effects library. And it's what I use for most of my uh, tutorials when I need to toss in some kind of a sound effect. I go to freesound.org, I search for what I'm looking for, I download it, and I'm good to go. There's a built-in preview play here. You can see the waveform that's generated. You can see the size of it, the ratings for everything. And there's a huge catalog of free sounds in here. Now, um, there's no limit on who can upload, so there's also free there's a lot of crap, but for the most part, I've actually had really good success with it. Now, at the same time, for 2D art, you've got opengameart.org. It's a gigantic repository of 2D game art. To be honest, the the chafe on, out, outweighs the wheat on this site by quite a bit. I'm looking for something a little bit more curated in the future, I think. There's a lot of crap on here, but if you just need 2D placeholder artwork, uh, open game art is definitely one of those things you should be aware of. Now, final guy that I'm actually, second from final guy I'm going to look at is VST for free. Now, remember earlier with Podium, I said that you can have these VST instrumentations and effects files. Well, this is a gigantic library of them. So, um, organs, uh, boss speed bass, etc. It's various different uh, drum machines, drum kits, guitars, etc. So, it's basically, so when you're bringing them into these sequencers, you can recreate these various instruments. So, this is a huge uh, archive of them available. And the last guy I'm going to show you. And you'll notice that it, it wasn't already loaded like other things because this one kicks the crap out of my browser. But it's one you should be aware of if you're not already. It's called Shader Toy. Now, Shader Toy is a massive collection of GL shaders. And really, that's it. It, it's, it allows you to come in. So you say you want the shader, and you see my computer is already because it puts a bunch of them on the home page. kicks your computer's butt. But you see, here's the shader running. Here's the code that handled it. Uh, here are the inputs to the various shaders. And you could come in here and say, say I global times multiplied by 0.5 here. Let's change it to 0.1 and we'll play. And you can immediately see the results over here. So if you're learning shaders or you need shaders, start here. There are over, oh God, I, I think I looked up the count the other day, 12,000. There are over 12,000 shaders currently on Shader Toy. Unfortunately, it does kick the crap out of your computer when you're running it. So like I said, I didn't have it running in the background because my computer was just slogging. But you use it just to pick out a shader and go from there. And it, so it's basically like uh, free sound and open game art for shaders, just with a little bit more tooling built in and real-time feedback if you modify the shaders. And that's it. Uh, that is the uh, 2016 edition of Free Game Development Resources. I'm planning to do this annually. Um, so, you know, anything that comes out in the next year, I'm hoping you'll capture it and get it in there. And of course, I did not get your favorite program. If I did not get your favorite program, please don't scream at me, but do let me know in the comments down below. Uh, share it with the other people reading this. The free stuff out there is staggering. It's amazing how far game development has come. Uh, when I started out, Pretty much everything was commercial if it was available at all. Otherwise, you were developing this stuff in-house. So we live in a golden age of free software, and a lot of the software is very, very good. You use it because it's good, not because it's free. But you also use it because it's free, because free is good. So that's what we've covered today. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you found something useful. If you did, please do click like. And if you're looking for game dev, st game dev, 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 game dev stuff, please do uh, subscribe to the channel. You'll see all kinds of stuff here, and I hope you enjoy it. All right. See you later, guys.